Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That's So Poe, and today I'm doing week 32 of my 2020 reads. This week I read quite a few different SFF books and I had to put a book on pause because my library demanded it back. So the first book that I finished was Shades of Grey by Jasper Ford. This is a book that I buddy read with Tori from Tori Morrow, who I will link below, and we actually had a great time discussing this book. Um, it is a kind of science fiction dystopian that was published about 10 years ago, and the premise of this book is that something happens and the world kind of collapses in a lot of ways. Um, and one of the things that changes is that people no longer have the ability to perceive the full spectrum of colors and instead they have very limited light perception where some people can perceive a lot of red or a lot of blue or a lot of yellow um, but less of other colors. Uh, and there are a whole group of people called the grays who perceive very very little color at all and they're very much um, an underclass. This is a strict hierarchy. This world is also very dystopian, very much in the style of like 1984, where there's severe limitations on access to information. And also there's a lot of kind of big brother like oversight where you're constantly being monitored. And there's a whole merit and demerit system based on, you know, what you contribute to society. Um, and all of this is done in kind of a satire way. So the book reads very much like uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy or Alice in Wonderland, where there's this absurdity to it all and this ridiculousness and over the top humor to it. I found it very, very funny. So this story follows Eddie, who is um, in a red seeing family, but he's kind of in disgrace and he ends up going to this uh, boondocks type of city with his dad. And there he meets Jane, who is a gray. And she's very interesting. He becomes intrigued by her, but she is not at all for the system. She's very much a rebel and he kind of gets into that. So. I absolutely adored the world building in this and the humor and the satire. I thought that was all so fascinating. Just this premise of a world that has um, basically regressed in so many very ridiculous ways. Things like they have a lot of religious fundamentalism, but it's all based around this really weird religion where there's all of these rules, things like um, no spoons may be produced. Forks and knives, you can make forks and knives, but no more spoons. All of the number of spoons that exist in the world today are all those spoons that will be forever. It's just really weird, weird, weird rules like that. Um, so I liked so much of that, but I found that the last quarter of this book, I really ended up disliking. So Tori and I talked about this quite a bit, but it was really frustrating to actually have Eddie, this red perceiving guy, as our main character, rather than Jane, the gray that he meets. Jane is so cool. She is somebody who is fighting against the system and she has no desire to conform and she's such a curious, interesting character. But instead, we get the perspective of Eddie, who is, this guy who's basically starts out completely ignorant and then through his interactions with Jane and some other things, he learns about kind of the injustices of the system in the world, but he's always somebody who's in a position of privilege. And this story I think is trying to be the sort of dystopian, which is all about taking down the system, except that the way that it chooses to go about that, because it's told from Eddie's perspective is very much um, one of working inside of the system with privilege. Uh, so Eddie is somebody who perceives red. He, he is privileged, he's an elite. And the sort of moral of the story is, well, what really needs to happen is that those who are privileged need more power and privilege so that they can, through minor loopholes and changes, make things a little better for those who are um, less advantaged by the system. And I was just so not um, impressed by that message. It really wasn't the message that I wanted to see and it really wasn't the story that I wanted to hear. Uh, it reminded me a lot um, in Jiri at Onyx Pages, who I will also link below. She has this rating system called the Seven Cowrie Shell rating system. And one of the things that she rates on is, am I hearing the story from the perspective of the most oppressed person, the most marginalized? and it was so fascinating in the story because that's really what I was questioning at the end of this. Why didn't I hear the story from Jane's perspective? Why did I have to hear it from Eddie's? And I think the answer is because it was written by a privileged white guy. 
Um, so yeah, I was not too pleased with it. Um, Tori and I had some interesting discussions uh, about the way that that played out. I thought that it was really, really funny in the beginning, but overall not so impressed. So I gave it three out of five stars. The next book I finished was Catfishing on Catnet by Naomi Kritzer. So this is a near future science fiction YA novel about a girl who belongs to Catnet, which is an online community where people chat and share cute pictures of animals. And she is really attached to her group on Catnet because she doesn't have any real world friends, mainly because she and her mom keep moving every few months to new cities and because uh, her mom's ex-husband, her dad, is a real scary character who is trying to find them and will do bad things to them. Um, so this story is all about kind of, you know, friendship and dealing with uh, constant moving. It's about how to trust your friends and get their help. It's about a kind of like a, a real mystery and thriller as well because we're dealing with the dad trying to find her all the time. But the other thing that this is about is about AI personhood, which is a topic that I actually really like. So the moderator and runner of CatNet is actually an AI called Cheshire Cat. And this AI is kind of hiding, acting like it's just another person um, in the group, but it's actually a very powerful AI that's running everything. So there were a lot of really cute things about this story. It has a lot of kind of interpersonal relationship stuff, a lot of friendship. It's got a lot of cute things. I did find though that I wasn't necessarily as engaged as I'd kind of hoped to be. So overall, I thought it was a fun ride uh, and I gave it four out of five stars. And the last book I finished this week was New Sons, edited by Nisi Shaw. This is a collection of speculative fiction short stories by authors of color. I'd originally heard about this from Injiri at Onyx Pages, who did a whole review of this, so I will link that below. Um, and I've been excited to read it because it just sounds so cool, and it really, really was. I think that this collection did such a good job of really pushing the envelope in a lot of ways. These stories are so different from so so much else that I have read in the speculative fiction genre. So if you're looking for something new and interesting and engaging, I think this collection is really worth picking up. There were so many stories in this that had completely different styles, different um, kind of patterns of the way that it's written. Just a lot of fascinating ideas in this as well. Really cool themes talking about colonialism or about kind of the oppressive regimes or about heritage or about being torn between things or about ecological disasters. I mean, there were so many really interesting themes in this. Um, not every story in this worked for me. There were even a couple of stories that I DNF'd, but there were so many amazing stories as well. I gave out a ton of five stars to different stories in this. It was really cool. Uh, some of the stories that really stood out to me were Kelsey and the Burdened Breath by Darcy Little Badger, which was such a sweet story. I totally cried at this. I loved it. It's about um, grief and about spirits and letting go of those spirits. It was so beautiful. Uh, there was also Give Me Your Black Wings, O Sister by Silvio Moreno Garcia. This was a really short story, just a couple of pages long, and I was so gripped by it. And it's all about the darkness within us and about how we try to move on, but how we might still be pulled back into it. Oh, it was, it was really, really good. There was also Burn the Ships by Alberto Yanez, and this was really one about fighting against um, colonialism, against oppressors, and the conflicts within communities that are fighting against that, um, and the steps that maybe you have to take in order to fight against it. Uh, it's also really about kind of the dynamics between men and women and their values. I, I really liked the story. Also, The Virtue of Unfaithful Translations by Min Su Kang, which I really liked. It was this slow and beautiful, um, almost history-like story that talked about an event where there were some translators who decided to maybe mistranslate things in order to achieve their own goals. And I just, I really loved that. I thought it was really good. So overall, I gave this collection an average of four out of five stars, and I really do recommend picking it up if you like speculative short fiction. It's very much worth the read. 
Then in addition to the books that I read this week, I did have to pause one book because my library loan expired and the library took it back, which was Learned Optimism by Martin Seligman. So this is one of the um, books that really started the idea of positive psychology, which I'm very much interested in. And this book in particular was recommended to me. So I started reading this. I got about 60% in before um, I had to return the loan. And it is a little outdated. I think it was written in the 90s. So I definitely felt that not everything about this um, is totally working for me, but the core concept, the core message talking about sort of resilience um, when faced with difficult situations and how to kind of have an optimistic outlook and think in ways that help you really recover um, your good mood and, and do good things. Uh, so I definitely want to continue and finish reading this because I've gotten to the point where it's talking about um, the effects of optimism, but I haven't gotten to the part where it talks about like what you can do to be more optimistic in your life. So I definitely will continue with this as soon as I can um, check out the hold again. Okay, so that wraps up week 32 for me. If you have read any of these books, if you have any comments or thoughts or anything like that, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you.